Hey boys, today a little bit of a different video style, I do you know, like this is not the usual one that I do, but uh, I think it around a little bit and I want to some sort of create, I don't know, like vlog thingy and I think it's worth to sharing, it looks ugly, but whatever, let's get started. <laughs> Alrighty, what do we have here? So I bought myself a MPPT charge controller as well as a battery and a back converter. And what I'm doing basically is I'm harvesting sun power. And I didn't know the sun currently is not shining that beautifully, but I am now running this Nodex off of solar for over 13 days now. And obviously this is not running 24 seven. This is basically running as soon as the sun has charged the battery uh, to a certain point. And then the Nerdex goes on. And as soon as it becomes dark, the battery will get drained to a certain voltage level. And as soon as that happens, yeah, the, the whole device shuts off. And here I do have a second battery pack um, which I need to recharge from time to time, connected to an ESP32, which then for is connected to the serial output of this MPT charge controller in order to read all these values to create something like, uh, yeah, an, an overview in Home Assistant to keep track of everything what this device does. Because this MPT, MPT charge controller does have a Bluetooth functionality, so I can read it out via Bluetooth, but yeah, I don't want to take a look on my phone all day long, so therefore therefore I've, I've done this. And uh, for this reason being, I need to shout out to Crypto Eyes from the OSMU community, because he helped me with that. I'm, I'm really a noob when it comes to Home Assistant. I'm not really using that that often, so therefore he helped me out with the script for it. It's straightforward. I'm trying to make a separate video for actually how to get this implementation uh, con contraption running with Home Assistant, but yeah, today I want to solely focus on the hardware, what I do use and how you can achieve something like this. And later on, we will go down in the garden and take a look at the solar panel because it's, it's really small. It, uh, you don't need big thingies and the whole setup just for the solar part was less than a hundred bucks. So yeah, I know this is maybe not the ideal way of doing that and maybe it's a little bit too expensive for some of you but that's fine this is solely on capturing what i've done here and sharing with you guys my experience so what do i have here i've ordered myself a 12.8 uh, volt 7 amp battery of, of amazon and let me get rid of uh, the packaging here i just ordered some cheap ones off of amazon what i did take a look at is that it is actually a lithium battery so that it is a lithium based battery because i they do have way better charging and discharging cycles than something like a gel battery or other ones and you don't want to use them you can but they're not as optimal as these ones i mean my my bigger plan is to create a small pack like a, a small container and pack everything in there put everything out in the garden and I never ever have to keep this in my house again. That's what I want to achieve. And that's why I say like this is some sort of a vlog recently or in, in the next couple of months, I'll also move. So then I do have a complete new setup that I can s therefore create in my new garden. But yeah, whatever. So um, links to all these parts are in the video description down below. So check them out if you want to. You don't need to, these are affiliate links, so you will help out this channel by using them so that I can produce more content like this. All right, so as I said, it's a 12.8 volt 7 amp battery. I initially set this up to use this with the BitX Hex and it is working with the BitX Hex. I just needed to change a couple of things, not really that much. It was really straightforward, but I moved it over to the, the nerd miner here in order to keep this up and running for a little bit longer period of time instead of just having the BitX Hex running maybe between four, four and a half or five hours per day, which is still fine, but compared to the Nerd Miner or the Nerd X here specifically, this is running way longer. And as you see, I do have two cables here, so I can plug in a, a second one as well. 
it just dramatically decreases the overall time that I can achieve, especially with this battery. Because um, if you do the calculation, this battery should last with one device for something like, uh, if there's no sun available, two hours maybe. With one device, maybe a little bit more than two hours. It depends on how you set this up because the MPPT charge controller does have its own app and you can actually change the settings. So this MPPT charge controller does have a load output, a PV input and a battery input. And uh, the load output only gets activated as soon as the battery hits 14 volts, which is considered state of the charge. So therefore this is kind of fully charged and it turns off as soon as I do hit something below 12 volts, which is to a battery level down of 20% 20, 20 roughly. You could go a little bit lower with them, but you don't actually want to do that in order to keep the cycle good and keep them at a healthy stage. So that's the MPPT charge controller and you can literally con control this. I, I bet I need to do a second video for that because the app itself is not that complicated and there are really good tutorials out there on videos. So please check them out if you do see a couple of them there. The rest of it is straightforward. What you theoretically could do is hook up the hex straight to the load output because the hex takes the input voltage from, it theoretically would be able between eight to 14 or 18 volts. Um, but currently in the software it's set between 11 to 14 volts so this load output always pulls out what the battery charge is so therefore if you have charged it up to 14.2 volts which is considered 100% charge then the load output will also show 14.2 volts which is fine and you can actually use that I just need to make sure like there's no plain 12 volts coming out of the output it's a little bit different from the state of the charge of the battery and that's the reason why I do have this construction here literally let me let me zoom in on that so that you can actually see this a little bit better let me see if I can hold this better in the camera it's it's really ugly here what I created I know as, as I said I will make this more beautiful in in a future video uh, but not now because plenty of things are happening at the moment but yeah whatever so this right here is a back converter it takes a input voltage between 12 to or 10 to something like 18 volts at an input and it can output whatever you said the left one is for the voltage the right one is for the amps that you can put out with that theoretically this should be capable of delivering up to 300 watts I'll definitely never use such a high amperage on this small device because it's really a cheap one it's probably some some cheap one of China you could just can order them off of Amazon they're not that expensive I bet like 10 bucks or something like this but I I moved it over to 5.3 volts and a maximum of 10 amps so that I can power multiple BDX devices off of that and it stays quite cool especially now it's literally cool with the hex it was a little bit weird I, I used it for the hex which was a stupid idea but um, it was getting pretty toasty that so I'm not going to use that again with the hex, but nevertheless, that's that's totally fine. Yeah, and then just to the to the output, I hooked up these cables that I prepared, really simply soldering them onto that, and then you can straight up run your BitX device or your NerdX device off of solar. Now let's go downstairs and let me show you the little solar panel that I do have, and then I consider it being a good good short video of getting you guys a little bit into solar because it's addictive guys literally this is so addictive as soon as you start with this crap you want more it's insane all right let me quickly go downstairs and let me show you what i got down there Alrighty, uh there we go yeah hey guys uh this is the panel and this is a hundred watt panel the highest amount that i was able to actually achieve off of this unit was 85 to 88 watts which is really good especially if you do run the hex with this panel because if the sun is directly hitting onto this and you're running the hex off of it you can actually keep this running for a long period of time and then the battery acts as some sort of a buffer in between to keep this up and running and especially if it's a cloud comes by or something like this especially today it's really cloudy not getting that much out of it that's also the reason being why i do run only nerd eggs currently off of solar and uh, not everything else but my future plan is to actually increase the solar setup that i do have 
I I'll get a, a carport at, at the new house where I'm moving to. So I'm trying to put solar on top of that to maybe even achieve it that I can run my whole office off of solar. Or we'll see, these are future projects, I don't know. We'll, we'll get into that. But yeah, this, this puppy is running really good and this was not that expensive. I think this was something like uh, 30 to 40 bucks, then 50 bucks for the MPPT charge controller and 23 to 30 bucks for the battery. So the setup therefore is really not that expensive. It's, it's quite good. And the panel behind there is for another solar thingy that I do have, but yeah, I, I think that's a really cool thing to do, especially like harvesting the daily sun to use it for Bitcoin mining. And maybe you do connect your miner to a uh, to a pool where you can get lightning payouts. So then you can have daily sun rewards. It's beautiful for free from the sun. Lovely, isn't it? All right, guys. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.